Welcome to Multiple Offers, a real estate show with competing perspectives. Today we are talking about drugs. Put that coffee down. If you're good at something, never do it for free. How'd you get the gig? Oh, you know, they were hiring. It was only a two-week course. I will sell this house today. What are you, some kind of real estate agent? Ah, oh, he's a realtor. There is a difference somehow. This is Multiple Offers, a real estate show. All right, guys, it is episode 27. Uh, Today, we are going to be talking about the impacts of the legalization of marijuana on the real estate industry. But before we get into that, how's it going, Jer? I'm glad you started with me again. Oh, you, you such a shocker. Every time when when I, I throw to Matt instead of you and you get upset about yeah, it, it always he, shocks me. Matt so. takes our all my good stuff to talk about. Um, well, we haven't talked about cars in a long time. Oh, no. And, <laughs> and uh, we're thinking about getting a new, uh, getting a van. Wait, who's? Matt and I. Getting a van. Are we being funny? No. Funny. You You and Matt like a moving van? Uh, yeah, I don't know, like a van. Like everyone's got these white vans around town. We've been, I, I, I've been seeing them all the time now that I'm thinking about them. Um, there's some nice ones. What are you talking about? <laughs> white, uh, like a white van. Can you explain to him why we're thinking of getting a van? Jeff we, does not. Because Matt keeps buying furniture for, for listings. Is this the staging mobile? Yeah. Because okay. we just keep, cl- we're collecting furniture right now. So yep. we just thought, uh, yeah. let's, what happens when these places aren't on the market anymore? Because my garage is full. Matt doesn't have a place either for storage. So you're just going to keep the staging furniture in the van at all times? So. I think so. Yeah. yeah. No, we're not. <laughs> no, in listings. <laughs> listings listings first, and then... It's for transportation, and it's a mobile billboard. And advertising. Yeah. We're going to wrap it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Or, or do... I was thinking we could do like a digi scene of the digi guys. Yeah. Just doing stuff. I think they should be like jumping on a Goomba... Or uh, doing staging. Yeah, I guess maybe. Or I'd, something like I'd that. I'd rather see them crushing video game characters. <laughs> maybe they're crushing video game characters with the staging furniture. These are great ideas. Well, I try. There, speaking of vans, I saw Adam Lloyd's uh, Remax van drive by. Really? Yeah, yeah. So uh, for our listeners, Adam Lloyd is an agent uh, who used to be at our office. Now he's he works at Stonehouse. And he used to have a moving van wrapped in Adam Lloyd Remax all the time, all over it. Buy or sell with me, use my van for free. Yeah, that, that is the slogan. It's still on the van? Yeah, it drove by me the <laughs> other day. I was like, he must have sold this to someone because there's no way now that he works. I mean, he owns Stonehouse. There's no way he's using that van anymore. Yeah. He, he must have sold it, but the guy never He didn't never take the got advertising re- off? No, it's totally the Adam Lloyd <laughs> <laughs> moving I don't, know, I don't know if I care if my advert. It's still, your name's still out there, I suppose, and he's still a practicing realtor. Which, technically, it's against our rules, though. It, absolutely, but it's advertising. <laughs> so, or you say, hey, I'll give you a really good yeah. deal on this on It's this also man. a 20-year-old picture of Adam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> What's going on with you, Matt? Did I take your, did I take your uh, thing you wanted to no, talk about? I didn't no. want to talk about the van we don't have yet. You really built up the mystery in, in, in Mystery your machine. The, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so we should, we should get a black van? I want to hear what Matt's doing. Okay. Scooby-Doo <laughs> reference, Jer. Okay. Come on. Not a team. Um, you know what I've noticed? We did uh, a couple of different photo shoots last week. Okay. And ever since episode 20 the magical art of real estate photography, Mm -hmm. we've actually stepped up our game on pictures. All the Kleenex boxes are gone. You won't, you'll never see one in our, uh, in our listing again. Like before the photographer even gets there. Yeah. You're ready. Because we had that whole conversation with Danielle, who is our regular photographer. And now we know kind of exactly what her sort of preferences are. Yeah. And, and we're just a little more on point because having the discussion and taking the notes, we realize what exactly we want. And so now when we walked into it, we have a really detailed game plan. And I'm noticing a little more gets done, a little more is prepared before she gets there. And it's going really smooth, and everything's getting a little just just that little bit better. It's been really good. Has Danielle noticed? She hasn't said anything. Danielle, oh. I'm, sure, <laughs> I'm sure she's noticed. She's like, if I point it out, they'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> I I had a really weird phone call uh, a couple days ago. 
somebody called me on a listing that I sold a year and a half ago. That happens. The internet. Yeah. And she's like, and, and the weirdest thing was it was my listing when I sold, like my actual place in, in oh, Oak Ridge. Oh, your, your home. Yeah. And, and she was all kind of miffed with me when I'm like, no, that, that place sold. And I had to take a second. I'm like, wait, 638. What what did you just say? And she's like, "This one, I I found it. I'd like to come see it." And I'm like, "Oh, that's sold." You know how people get sold, kind of miffed if they feel like they didn't get a chance to get in. I got a bit of that, and I'm like, "It it sold a very long time ago." <laughs> and uh, and then uh, yeah, she was all angry and hung up on me. I feel like that's the flaw in these websites that different people, agents, or just people trying to attract leads create. Sure. Right? They've probably created a site that is Oak Ridge listings. Totally. And she just searched, I want to see listings in Oak Ridge. And she gets taken to this page. And there's some content that's a little out of date, but it doesn't say how old the listing is. It just has a really good looking price. Yeah. And yeah. and people don't know. And that's because we have the benefit to to take the MLS data and essentially plug it into any website, any sort of visual format that we want. Yeah. And that's the problem is when people don't manage it properly someone's making a very specific search and it just ends up getting really irrelevant content. But they thought they were there because they're probably at like oakridgecondos.com. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. So anyway, that's that's my check-in for today. Before we get into our main topic here, why don't we hear what's in the news? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. I got a news flash for you, Walter Cronkite. I am enlightened. Do it live! I can I'll write it and we'll do it live! This is Multiple Offers, a real estate show. This week's news, cannabis is legal. Now, it's legal, but it ain't 100% legal. I mean, you just can't walk into a restaurant, roll the joint, and start puffing away. Moving on. Let's get nuts. You decide your own level of involvement. Well, I guess this is a case where we'll have to agree to disagree. I don't agree to that. Neither do I. Wrong. National debt. Wrong. 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 Advocate. Wrong. With that money, wrong. we lost. Wrong. 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 Very nice words, but happens to be wrong. You're listening to Multiple Offers, a real estate show. Now, our listeners might be wondering, why are we talking about the legalization of marijuana on a real estate podcast? And that is because the one of the biggest stigmas when you're buying a home has been for the past few years, whether or not it was a grow up. And we're going to get into all of these effects, how that changes or doesn't change now that uh, marijuana is legal. Um, where do we want to start here, guys? Well, I, I'm pro. I'm happy that it is legal. You just want to take a stand. <laughs> and because, I mean, a lot of times we don't take stands necessarily in, with this, some of but these this things. One. But this, this one. This is, is where Jared's going to plant I his did, flag. I just think it's been a long time coming. Um, there's a lot of stigma. Like there's, we deal with it, yeah. you know, not as regularly now because it's been with, with the whole legalization or, or decriminalization, which has kind of been happening over the past few sure. years. Um, like I don't think they're arresting anybody for possessing they probably don't want you selling it or cultivating it. No, but. minor possession and consumption has been a non-issue for years. Yeah, and we don't see it so much with with houses. Like, there's a few ex garages, but a lot of those places, like people, you know, they use them as building lots, so they might tear the house down. So, and that stigma has all of a sudden been released from the <laughs> from the house. Well, we'll we'll get into that actually. Yeah, but but uh, I think just from like a social standpoint, um, I think it's just good that the the stigma is kind of lifted and and maybe some people for whatever reason they might partake and they might live totally normal lives doctors lawyers whatever um who may have felt that they had to it's socially acceptable for them to have wine or, or beer or whiskey or what have you and and you know maybe they do partake in in cannabis weed pot ganja whatever you want to call it and they had to hide that aspect because what are my friends going to think or what are people going to think it still feels a little weird to talk about it uh, yeah when when is the turning point that people can admit that they're habitual users i think it'll be a generational thing i think the hardcore like my identity is attached to to being a, a weed smoker they're, they're going to be fine already 
but I think I think a lot of people who grew up with it being illegal will still kind of think of it as something like maybe I do, maybe I don't. I don't like to talk about it, <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I think it's going to be interesting moving forward. Like I, we've all had instances maybe where there's a client that you never thought would have, and you're like, oh, I guess that kind of makes sense. Or you know, you maybe. You, somewhere they're they're smoking weed but i think it'd be interesting just to see some of these people you're like i had no idea that like maybe you're meeting at a client and or people celebrate like we were with people in their homes we just sold their place let's celebrate crack the champagne whatever yes yeah when does someone (laughs) hand you a bowl of of weed gummies or something um well and i don't even i don't think of it as weird at all to bring like a tall boy or a bottle of wine nice beer to a to a subject removal like, I don't even yeah. ask the client. I just show up and I'm like, hey, I hope this is okay. I thought it'd be fun to have a drink with you. It would still mentally be really weird to be like, hey, I, one I, up. Brought some, <laughs> I brought a joint. <laughs> like, I've saved, been saving this really good kush here for you guys for a long time for this one instance. <laughs> so at what point does it become socially acceptable for a realtor who sits in a a position that is supposed to be a respected position of a professional advisor to admit to their clients that they like maybe sometimes they smoke weed like at a party that's once every couple months or they like to smoke a couple times a week like does is there a point where or do you have to sort of hide it i mean i guess we all sort of admit to our clients they're like oh yeah sure i go to the bar to have a drink with friends right yeah i think it is and i don't even think twice about that yeah i think you're right though generally generationally it's going to be a you're always a hippie if you do that or you're always this is just oh you're one of those like a pothead or or whatever and that'll just stick and that's what that person's perspective regardless of whether it's illegal or not that's going to be their perspective of you but even like some of the the older generation now who we are around age let's say like middle, middle age no i'm talking like 65 to 75 80 years old or maybe 60 to 80 I mean, a lot of them were were around in the hippie era. I think they're fine with it. Well, yeah, but but they but after that, like from the late seventies on, they had to like they changed this whole perception that drugs are bad. But in their youth, they were probably all either while well, they were heavily exposed to it and different degrees of participation, right? right. Um, but they certainly saw it. But then I feel like age forty five to fifty five or sixty maybe is where they grew up from the beginning, where it was never acceptable. I'm sure there's going to be tons of like friends of ours, parents and things like that. They're like, yeah, actually, I'm either excited about starting again or, yeah, I've been doing this the whole time. I just, you know, hit it in the deep freeze or something. My dad keeps trying to convince my stepmom that he's high. Like she came downstairs on stairs on uh, legalization day. And he was like, I'm so hungry. I just want I just want something to eat. Like I, I just I've got the munchies. And she's like. Nick, it's <laughs> six in the morning. I know, like, I, I know you didn't. And he's trying to get my brother in on it. And Garth's just like having none of it. He's like, I don't want to pretend I'm high to have a joke <laughs> on Carol. Like, that's funny. <laughs> so that's my stance. That's kind of where I'm, I'm one of the things I'm kind of looking forward to. Um, We'll see how it plays out with real estate, though. Like, I was just going over a property disclosure statement, uh, you know, this morning with a client and one of the final questions on there. And then they're the big question. Like, they're, you have these to explain it. It's a disclosure statement. You fill this out when you're selling your house saying, I've never had water leaks or I don't have issues with, with pests or things like that. And they're all fairly small boxes, small print, initial off, yes or no, don't know, does not apply. And then at the bottom of the, of the third page, third page, Matt? Matt's, that, Matt's nodding his head. That checks out. Yeah. Um, there's three larger boxes, and one of them is this, it's one of the big questions. Been used to manufacture illegal drugs. Has this property been used? Um, which I guess we're going to get into, like, yeah, the gray area. What's it? Might do I just have one little personal plant, or I just like the look of the plant, or or whatever? Right. Um, or I cook with it. Is this a grow up? What's what's the number? I think Matt, you might have the answer to that. Yeah. Well, there's there's the growing part in your house, and then there's there's consumption in your house, and what I what I kind of want to talk about first, because we've talked about now how it's become more socially acceptable, and people are going to feel a lot more comfortable consuming uh, in their home, right? And what we do know is that through the legal methods now, they've they provided ob- obviously the option to smoke, but there's also oils, the candies that we've heard about. I don't think actually exist for sale in BC yet. They've they've been in the dispensaries, I think, for a long time. But, but as far but... as legal weed goes, right now, like the legal 
that's not like non medicinal, just there, recreational. I, di- there's no store. There's only one store in Kamloops. I don't know if we're actually going to have stores because everything like retail is kind of dead. Right You're talking now. about the legal stores, like the legal yeah. stores. Yeah. Um, there is like just the same way. I was looking this up the other day because I was curious for a friend. Um, there's the like BC <laughs> liquor stores. And there's the BC cannabis store. Yeah. And I think they had oils and and they call it the flower bud. Yes, yeah. most people uh, recognize the term. Um, I they didn't see they didn't have any of that stuff. No, I I, I yeah. looked it up today as well because I was yeah. curious and I was like, that's it. That's all that's available, sort of online in BC, right? So a lot of people will still be smoking. So the conversation I'm curious to have with you guys is, wh- how does that impact housing? Hmm. Right? There's the strata side of things where you share a wall in a common hallway with a lot of neighbors. You've got people above or below you. If there's an implication with open windows, balconies, that kind of stuff, or just a single family lot and somebody likes to get home from work every day and just go out in the back porch. Maybe they, you know, they work labor or something and, you know, he or she needs to sit down and just relax and, and, and smokes one every day after work. But I find my experience now, personally, this is just me. I hate the smell of weed and I find that it just, and I hate the smell of tobacco smoke too. Mm-hmm. Um, but I find that, that the weed odor really just is like heavy and lingers and it has a much, much wider radius you know, I'm out at the park and you're playing soccer. I'm out with the kids and you can smell it and you look around and there's like a hundred feet in every direction. You're like, where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> it could be someone made with like a pen or something like that, a bait pen. But. but but it seems to have a real wide radius. It's heavy. It lingers. So it can impact a lot of people. Uh, so talking, I guess the first thing is where can you smoke it? Base rules, if you guys haven't read it, it's essentially the same rules Every province has done it different, but BC is saying that it's the exact same rules for smoking cigarettes. Right. So if you know what those rules are, if you're a smoker... It's like three meters from a a door or something. Doorways, public spaces, parks, beaches, where kids are, you know, that kind of stuff. It applies for vaping too, so not in workplaces. Even in work vans, it was weird. Like they added that in. Even if it's... So we can't in the van? (laughs) Stop <laughs> pretending like we actually smoke weed. <laughs> yeah, I think the funniest part, because, Jared, it's great that you've come out as pro for it, but some some context, you are not a weed smoker. No, I don't. Really <laughs> <smoke>. <laughs> no. <laughs> I want to make that actually very clear. I have no issue with people who maybe do want to, but I don't. <laughs> and we're, see, like, we're seeing... Like in, and this is probably for most main cities now. It, yeah. Thing. I mean, we're pretty health conscious in like Vancouver, greater Vancouver, but uh, people are pretty anti smoking anyway. It's marijuana. People tobacco. draw a real strong line between tobacco and, and marijuana, though. Well, I mean, like in terms of we have stratas that are like we've never seen before yeah. on a maybe not monthly basis, but there's always new buildings, maybe almost monthly, that we're seeing pop up that are like anti smoking building with, with actually bylaws limiting smoking. And that's usually an umbrella. Bylaw for any even vaping weed anything. Yeah, they're including all of them if they do come out with that bylaw, right? So the the delineation here is that government can only create laws on public property, right? Or they've at least chosen to do that, I should say. But as a private group, a strata can create their own rules. Yeah. So private property, though, by default, there are no government implemented rules. So stratas have to come up with their own individual rules. And like Jeremy's saying, we're seeing more and more of that. So strata does have the option, and we're seeing it, to prohibit smoking, vaping of any kind on 100% of that strata lot property. Right. Even in your house. Even inside of your your, your condo unit, on the front lawn of the building, yeah. on the back garage, in the stairwells, absolutely everywhere on that lot. Others will say, yes, you can smoke in your home. That's your home. You've purchased it. It's up to you what you do. There's there are different implications there. So how does that affect our clients? Read the bylaws, because one th- I found that some I feel like mostly it's it's just on like limited common common property. They're not going as far as to say don't do this in your house, except for there's a few exceptions that we've seen around. Now town, what we've seen so far is specifically talking about tobacco, like it's talking no, about no, cigarettes. No, 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 but everything. No, I've seen new strata laws that uh, already. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, they were getting ahead of it. Interesting, because they wouldn't have had to up until till now, because technically it, it was illegal before anyway, so if there was an issue. Yeah, no, but we've experienced it in some buildings where some people smoked a lot of weed in their unit, and it would get under their door and permeate into the hallway sure. and bother other people, yeah. and stratas were 
the, obviously they're aware of it, they're aware of complaints and their issues. So they were once they knew this legislation was coming down to legalize, yeah, they got right ahead of it and said, "Hey, next AGM, we're voting in. We're we're, we're going to table some options here because of you, Jerry." <laughs> <laughs> I think also because of like because people were smoking because they were medically they were allowed to right they had licenses and things like that so even even ahead of the knowing that it was going to be legal they were they were trying to get a, get ahead of it but yeah and I I think a strata bylaw probably we were talking about that the other day Matt I, I think a strata bylaw could overrule like even if you have a medical license to smoke marijuana they can probably say not here though. Probably, and I yeah. wonder about that. I did try to find something, yeah. BC Human Rights, yeah. anything about well, if it's for medical use, do I have sort of the an exemption here to smoke in my unit? And I would, now I didn't find anything, so I'm just coming with my own logic, yeah. but I'd say anybody who tries to make that case has a really, really, really hard time saying that they deserve an, ex- an exemption because there are very suitable alternatives that don't include smoking that give you the same medical benefit Right. And don't disrupt your neighbors. You're talking edibles. Yeah. 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 Now, yeah. If, there, if, that, if that alternative wasn't there, sure, you might have a human rights case. But there is a, there is a suitable alternative that gives you the same outcome. Yeah. So it's pretty tough to say, I have to smoke. And maybe that's why it's functional to bring in these bylaws that say no smoking, because there are edible alternatives if you're looking for the high. But maybe some people like the... The act of smoking. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Is there something therapeutic about that? About just sort of. I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, unless there's some sort of other chemical compound that's like, or you can't buy the gummies yet. So maybe. But but they do have them in dispensaries, though. I think I'm pretty sure. You can yeah, but the dispensaries them. can't sell legal weed yet. They don't. They don't work. But they still have the medical system where you can. Yeah, you card, can go right? and you can say I get headaches and get a prescription. So if that's the way you wanted to go. Um, okay, so a couple more things then uh, about where you can smoke. I- I'm curious what you guys think about this. And again, because I, I, I'd have a real issue with this if it was my neighbor, right? So I'm, I'm living in a house, and how does it work with single-family lots? If somebody's thinking of buying a house, like what can they do? What can they know? Because again, that is 100% private property. There is one owner. There is no bylaw or law that prevents anybody from smoking in their, in their yard. Common law, quiet enjoyment. That's that's quiet enjoyment, peaceful enjoyment. Now, some people can get into gray areas and say, well, where does peaceful enjoyment sort of flow over into my yard or two yards away or whatever it is? Right. That becomes a thing where you don't really have enough authority. Like, there's not enough teeth in any of the laws out there to stop someone from smoking. So, one, if you're a smoker and you want to smoke in your yard and you're looking to buy a house, you're going to be okay. But two, if you want to know that you're getting away from that, that's pretty tough. As a purchaser. And it's a weird thing for us because in Vancouver, because I think a lot of us, we don't, a very small percentage of the population smokes like cigarettes. Mm -hmm. We don't have to think about it much. The odds of having a neighbor who smokes is pretty low, but the odds of having a neighbor who wants to smoke weed after work, I think it might be actually higher than cigarette smokers. I'd say move somewhere else. Just because because there's, (laughs) there's, we're, I think we're just too hypersensitive about, about this stuff. You have people that complain about somebody using their wood burning fireplace in their, their, their hundred year old house in Queens park. I just think like, I I understand that it's offensive to you, the smell of it, but it's, if, unless they're just sitting out there chain smoking, you know, know, joints in their backyard. um, But what what if it's every day at five 30 when they get home from work, close your window and you, and you got your kids and you want to be outside. It's dark. It's, it's dark. not hurting the kids, though. That's the it's thing. dark at seven. You want to get outside. It's five thirty. Everybody's kind of outside for that hour, and you want to go out there and, like, for me, yeah. pass the ball around with my kid. And we got it. We got to smell all the secondhand weed flowing over from eighteen feet away on their patio. I could be using my smoker, and I got a nice brisket in there, and it's gross, stinky meat that you don't like. But you're where, not going to smoke. Bris- the line, you're right? not going to smoke a brisket every single day. Somebody I could. <laughs> if I had a house. But that's not likely. That's this is not the likely. biggest stand Jer has ever taken on the show. That I'm is, really enjoying this that, right now. That is not very likely that somebody's going to be smoking meat for hours every single day. There is a higher probability somebody could move into a house where somebody smokes weed every single day after work. Yeah. I would be very curious. I don't have minutes, the legal background to know. It, it doesn't linger for only five minutes. Like that's... I'm curious how your right to quiet enjoyment applies. I, none of us are lawyers, and it's way too early to be able to to make a call. But 
yeah, I'd be very curious if anybody out there uh, is a lawyer listening to this, <laughs> um, send us an email at feedback at morealestateshow.com because I, I'm very, very curious about what, what the neighbor's rights are. Um, I think I... And, and, and to the smoker thing too, right? If you have somebody smoking stuff all day long, can you make a, a complaint? The, the other thing is probably just step one is have a civil conversation with your neighbor and be like, hey, I'm going to bring my kids out in like, can you wait 10 minutes until they're tired before I come back? Although maybe or, that's offside. I don't know anymore. But but even your argument, like close your windows, like seriously, I got to lock myself in my house because buddy next door, like yeah. smoking weed every single you know, day. If you don't, if there's like a smell or whatever, and, and if it's something that's, you're, we're talking about like a, a, we're not like somebody cranking Aria on the grande well, you know, when you're trying to be outside with your family and it's just so noisy and it's like that's really offensive. hours because that's offensive. <laughs> um, but if you're talking about somebody having, you know, lighting up a joint, I, what is it, five minutes, 10 minutes? I, it's it's such a small amount of time that I feel like, yeah, you probably just go someone's like neighbor smoking. I I did that for years at Murano. We had it, you know, like it's just you, you just kind of. Deal. It's a it's a small have a like conversation. Like you had a neighbor who was yeah, yeah yeah. We just closed the window and then we open it again. I I just feel like it's such a short amount of time that like okay. Well, I'll give you that. I I've actually never had to personally experience this scenario that I fear yeah. of. And so if so it this is, is a hypothetical, this is hypothetical. Okay, but if it, if it was really only like five to ten minutes and you can just move on and carry on, then that's that's probably manageable between neighbors and and could work out right. I could see that that working. I I don't like other people's sort of uh, let's call them things that could, that could hurt them, their health being imposed on my health. Right. Well, I get, I guess that's where the mental shift we'll see if it happens or not too, is because now that it's a perfectly legal thing to do, it's very hard. Now it's, it's, it's a moral argument as opposed to a legal one yeah but even with cigarette smoke right like i don't I, I would never and i never have wanted that imposed on me right but with cigarette smoke you actually do have rules that protect you i mean they're fairly recent but your neighbor isn't allowed to come within a certain area of your entrance ways uh we're not if we're cigarette. talking private property like single family lots well they they can't stand close enough to your door that it's not your door yeah but if they stand on their lot line yeah they're within their right can they even if it's close to yeah? Because those because those doors door? and ventilation systems yeah. that's all public buildings or where yeah. people gather. It's not single. It's not it's not individual homes. Hmm. I don't. Know I think I... you'd actually have an easier time getting people on side to get rid of the the cigarette smoker just because of the Vancouver <laughs> mental. <laughs> and I don't think now that it's legal, I haven't noticed any difference at all. Like I don't Neither see people I. just walking around. Like I'm walking my dog and I have my joint. I haven't seen anyone haven't... casually smoking a joint in areas that I wouldn't have already seen. Because yeah, the last few years joints. people felt free enough without any sort of you know threat of incarceration or fine or whatever. Right. To just do it. Okay. Where so they th- those are to. my super fearful yeah. hypotheticals of experience other experience experiencing other people smoking Dude, don't worry man. just have a gummy relax <laughs> just it's it's not gonna, yeah, i don't think it's line. actually going to change other than like stratus seeing bylaws i don't know if it's I really yeah so so change. again for our listeners and they got they got to pay attention to those bylaws right because if you are a smoker you want to know the bylaws won't impact you negatively and if you are the type of person like me who really wants some confidence there are certain buildings that can give you more assurance that you're not going to be negatively impacted uh last point on kind of where you can smoke uh, as far as tenants go so if people are thinking of renters uh baseline with the new laws if your existing tenancy agreement said that you couldn't smoke inside your unit smoke cigarettes then it just applies to to weed well and a landlord can say you can't smoke cigarettes Again, even though just like a strata, a landlord yeah. can dec- like a landlord can say, "I don't want anybody with pets," and that's perfect. Even though pets are legal, yeah. But I'm just saying yeah. that if if because it's legal today, if your right if your tenancy agreement as of the beginning of October said no smoking cigarettes, right, that now includes no smoking marijuana. It's implied. It's a smoking. Yeah, hmm. but any any tenancy agreement signed after legalization now has the option to negotiate. You could say no smoking tobacco cigarettes, but I do allow you to smoke weed. Interesting. So there's different rules there. And that's going to be important for our listeners if they're thinking of holding rental properties and what they want to allow their tenant to do, because Jeff's going to tell us more about you know, how that affects us on um, the, the, the lending side of things and insurance and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So why don't we get into that? The, 
the thing I think that's important to the oh, listener. I do. Uh, oh, you got one more thing you well, want to add? Well, because if we're going to yeah. talk about how this impl- implicates people from a lending perspective, we're, we're talking about grow ups. So let's maybe yeah. talk about what you can grow at home. Sure. And then we'll talk about all the implications around yeah. having weed at home. Okay. Um, so, uh, very, very last point though, too, uh, before I talk about growing at home, if you're thinking of buying real estate and you're wondering about where people can smoke, the other thing is where retail locations will be. Every jurisdiction is going to be different. I've been looking at ours as far as city of new West. They've said they're going to allow five, uh, they're, they're, they're considering five locations in town. Essentially it's one in each sort of commercial segment of mm-hmm. new West. So downtown, uptown, Sapperton, uh, 12th street and Queensboro, I think. So you got to be first. You got to be first. They said they have a huge load of applications. I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. And they're only going to, and it's going to be like getting Is it going to be like getting a liquor store license? Yeah. Exactly. And then it's just, yeah. a, it's just a license to print money for the rest of your life and you can just sell that license. So yeah, it's just wow. a gold rush right now where it's like, I want one of those first five. Right. So uh, they've got rules, like New West says, proximity to schools, proximity to other things like that. So look at your own jurisdiction, where you think those are going to be. Uh, The research I heard from Colorado and California is it's actually only helped the areas. It's actually brought up property values, which seems completely weird and contradictory to me. But that's been their statistical findings. did, Did you find out anything about how they pick? Well, is it's, it fully a lottery, or is it we're vetting and we're seeing? Oh no, what, it's, what oh, it's not a lottery. No, I'm sure. no, it's very much vetted. Like first off, they want to start and see that all the people in charge have no criminal record or no or no signs of uh, criminal Organized funds. Crime, yeah, right. they want to know that the funds are legit. They got to fill out a fin track. Yeah. Yeah, so they're going to they're going to check the source of the money. They're going to see the people who are there. So they're they're really vetting it quite closely. They're going to look at the the facility itself. You have to already have a lease agreement in place for the facility mm-hmm. before you can even get approval. So if there's a lot of upfront investment, and you might even just lose. They might just turn around and say no. So are the uh, you know sorry I know this isn't <laughs> and again asking for a friend. It's is this uh, it's your show too, Jerry. You're allowed to ask questions. <laughs> it's different with it's different with weed because like alcohol you can like there's no rules against just like drinking a beverage but whereas smoke you've got work safe issues mm. it's not like a place where you can smoke it it's just a sales it's a retail sales not like an establishment for yeah it's not a consumption location and, yeah 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 purchasing only are can they are even hookah hookah lounges so those those still a thing i don't think we have any in new west but i don't know of any in new west do those get I around think the smoke there are some they must be allowed I mean, there are places that aren't legal that allow you to smoke weed in their establishments. Mm. The only thing that's actually been legalized is is retail distribution. Right. 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 Which I guess then consumption. Uh, yeah, consumption in a, in a place of, of business for profit. I don't know. That's a, that's a weird one. Uh, so growing at home, uh, sort of the short version is the legislation allows you to grow four plants at home. Four plants. Yeah. Four plants per household, not per occupant. <laughs> and if you've got a detached house and you've got a, a tenant downstairs, again, that's one household. Oh, so you got to put that in your lease agreement. Like, I'm the guy with the four plants. I get the four plants. Uh, there's no limit on how many crops you can yield throughout the year. They said you can yield up to four. You can harvest like four times per year. Um, full, is that full? Is there a size restriction? Like full no, grown? No, there's no size restriction. So okay. So the, so the the hypothetical is they figure people can put out I think they said fifteen kilos per year from those four plants personal use. Yeah. So let's get into what the bank thinks though, because that's all well and good. And if you're thinking about growing uh, your four plants, uh, I did send Steph, who uh, has been on the show before, to talk mortgages, and I think she's actually going to come on next week. Uh, to give us some updates. Oh, that's good, because that'll be episode 28, and we haven't seen her since episode 6. Yeah, so uh, she's got some new new lending practices and sort of alternate lending uh, methods that she wants to talk about. But I did send her a, hey, how, do, how does the bank feel about all legalization and, and growing marijuana at home? Because right now, or, or up until now, if the bank is aware that there has been uh, a grow-up in the home, most of the banks will not finance on that home, and the ones that will are going to require the buyer to have a much larger down payment. Um, I've seen as high as 35% down uh, before. So now that it's legal, uh, I thought it was a good idea to ask Steph what she thought or what the banks thought. Um, and her, her response says, uh, there are absolutely no changes that I am aware of. It has nothing to do 
with the fact that it's illegal that makes the bank not like them. It's more about electricity changes and general and generally uh, the amount of moisture that gets brought into the home when when marijuana is being grown um, and how that affects the structure itself. So one thing you should really think about if you're thinking about growing uh, weed in your house is you are going to be asked on a form whether uh, the home has ever been used as a grow up. And that's interesting. We'll find out because the form may change because right now it says illegal. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's going to need an update right now. Yeah. Uh, but the, the, the buyers may ask and the banks may ask. And if it gets flagged, you're not going to be able to finance currently. Now, that could change in the future. Maybe there'll be all these regulations of how you do it without damaging your home. But currently, the banks still think it is a gigantic yeah. red flag. So just grow it like a normal plant. Like you would, because lots of people have more than four regular plants. You don't need a full hydroponic setup, <laughs> like you would a fern or your, you know, what snake tongue. What's a plant? Plants that people have. <laughs> Typical plants. My my dad went into one of those hydroponic stores uh, a few years ago. He heard one of the ads on the radio, and they kept being like, and I remember this ad. They were like, "It's perfect for growing your tomatoes," and and. Get the biggest yields. Yeah. Oh, yeah. On tomatoes. Totally. And my dad does grow tomatoes, so he <laughs> thought that was fantastic. And he went in to buy them, and like they could not believe him. He's like, "Yeah, I'm going to use these for tomatoes." And they're like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, that's right." And he's like, "No, I'm." He had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and he does use them for tomatoes, and they they work amazingly. <laughs> so yeah, you don't need, and you're not you're not stealing power. They're talking about electrical consumption. I mean, if you've got. A, you know, a, a little herb basil garden or whatever thing on your windowsill or in your, your um, you know, in your kitchen or something. A lot of times those have a little grow light. It wouldn't surprise me if we get to a point where the banks don't care at the like four and under because it's when you're running yeah. a major operation. Huge they, amounts of moisture yeah. because of the, the intense amount of water. It's hot. Yeah. It's humid. I and, guess that's the gray area, though, is you asked how big can these four plants get? Mm-hmm. And there's no government limit to it. And what I read said they, they can get 20, 25 feet tall. Huge, yeah. like, they can get massive. So, so you, you want a loft. So <laughs> you, but, <laughs> vaulted ceilings. Lots of windows, <laughs> lots of ceiling height, natural light. But the thing is, that is still an issue for the bank. That's that uh, pl- plants those big put out put off a lot of moisture. Like they create a, they create a, a real humid environment, right? It's like going to the the Amazon exhibit at the uh, right the Vancouver Aquarium, right? Um, so it doesn't matter. The banks, I don't think, are going to change their position because they'll say the risk is still there. I didn't. I wasn't in your house every day to know if you did it on a small scale or a large scale. Four plants is still a risk. So they like black and white. Well, they don't like risk. So, yeah. yeah, their black and white will be, you say, I grew a plant. I say no yeah. financing. We should come back to this <laughs> in six months and see if the disclosure forms have changed. Yeah. And also if the bank's stance has changed. I, I would be very curious. I, I don't think you're necessarily wrong. I, I'm just I, – well, I think it, the disclosure form will change. There's also the issue of insurance. Yes. It's hard to get insurance on a home that's ever had a grow show because of electricity risks, right? A huge risk of fire. People with those those with the lights to help grow and that kind of stuff. Um, and and water issues because people do some weird stuff with plumbing and that kind of stuff. So insurance companies don't like touching it. So if you can't get an in- insurance policy on your house, you can't get a mortgage. Well, and I wonder how the um, real estate board's opinion will change because up until now, as far as the board is concerned – you can burn that house down that was a grow op and it still needs to be disclosed because the the buyer has a right to know that illicit activity happened and maybe organized crime is coming back to get you. Right. Uh, I, I think that will go away. I had hoped that that part changes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, I'm sure there's going to be a time if we're, you know, we're, we've already been in the business quite a number of years, but, you know, if we're like typical realtors that older, like they're well, doing it until turn into s- dinosaurs, 70s, 80s, like there's real, there's some old realtors out there is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, we're going to have younger clients that are be like, what is a grow up? What are you talking about? Like, I got to tell you as a grow up, what? Back in the day, people who used to grow weed in their houses, um, and it caused all sorts of problems. Well, and, and BC's rules are different than the rest of the countries. I didn't know this until um, I had a client come from Winnipeg a few years ago, and their house, while they were selling it, was on the news because somehow it got discovered that the previous owner had run a grow-up 
out of the house. And they did a big news story on how Winnipeg doesn't have laws that protect people. And they had like they had so much trouble selling their place in Winnipeg. And I asked them, I'm like, well, what about like all the forms and stuff? Did they lie to you? And they're like, oh, nothing like that is covered. Like BC has very stringent disclosure laws compared to the I think the rest of the country. I don't know about Definitely. Toronto, but uh, the sort of the middle provinces, I think, are much more lackadaisical. Yeah, and I think it's because we had such a huge issue with grow ops for a short period of time there, right? It right. became a massive issue, another sort of knee-jerk reaction. We come up with new forms, yeah. new disclosures. God, we, we're gonna, it's going to be 10 pages to get a listing on the market if it had been a couple of years, right? We keep coming up with new things to disclose. Um, now, to save people all of this hassle, if you want to grow your four plants, you can just grow them outside. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> on your balcony. So the rules are it can't be visible from a public place. So you can't. So your backyard is okay if there's like a fence? Yeah, and you can grow it on a balcony, but you have to put a screen that does not allow someone to see it from the street. I wonder if people are going to start robbing backyard plants. <laughs> well, don't grow one 15 feet tall then, I guess. Yeah, fair enough. It's it's going to be everywhere. Teenagers are going to. Their parents will have some in their house they can steal from. They don't need to. They won't need, they don't to, need to rob to go it pick anymore. Fresh plant because you still have to dry it. It's a process. So yeah. I, I know like we're having a discussion here, and it's good to share ideas. I would say though that as professionals, I think the consensus probably is our advice to anybody is don't grow in your home. Yeah, for now, definitely. I I would be very very cautious, and I'd I'd want some. New stances from the banks before you even think about it. Yeah, I'd say unequivocally right now, do not grow inside your home. All right, well, I think that's enough about our main topic. Uh, let's let's go to question of the week. Check out the big brain on Brad. How's it working out for you? What? Being clever. Who knows where thoughts come from? They just appear. You're listening to Multiple Offers, a real estate show. I mentioned on Facebook that this was going to be the topic of the week this week, and we did get a question from a listener. This comes from Allison Ferguson. Uh, She says, if you are a buyer and you're interested in a property, does the seller have to disclose if they've grown marijuana, or is it even a faux pas just to ask? Okay. Sorry, I just want to make sure I'm clear on the question. If you ask the seller if they've grown Yes. So is a, is a buyer allowed to ask the seller or is that is that not okay? Okay, well, first answer is you can always ask anything. Yeah, I think I think that's important um to to note is you know anything like like let's compare this to something that has nothing to do with illegal or legal now activity. If you're really concerned whether someone died in the home or not, the seller doesn't have to disclose that to you until you ask. But once you ask, they can't lie about it. If somebody died in the home and they know about it, they have to tell you. That's right. So the same would apply, essentially. Yeah. We're talking about material latent defects? I, I, okay. So if, if we're going to geek out for a second, let's just define that for the, um, for the listener. So a material latent defect is something that would affect the price of the home or the use or enjoyment of it. Uh, that the the buyer couldn't find out on their own through a reasonable inspection. So there and it is, can be relative. Something could affect the value for me and not for you. No. Yes. No. That's a stigma. So um, l- let's talk about the dead body for for example. I feel like Matt should be a tiebreaker on this one. Matt can be a tiebreaker. Um, so a material latent defect is. Something that you, affects the value, right? You have to disclose it no matter what. It doesn't matter yeah. whether the buyer asks it or not. Um, an example I used to talk about was if the home was a grow up, uh, was definitely a material latent defect, but let's say there were termites in the walls and you had covered up all the holes and removed all evidence. The buyer is not going to notice that there, because there is no evidence, but those termites are still there and you know about it. The buyer does not have to ask the seller, are there termites in the walls? The seller has a duty to disclose that that's a material Mm -hmm. latent defect. Whereas I think what you're talking about is if there's something that would only be important to you, like whether someone died in the home or not, that doesn't actually affect the value of the home unless you care about it. But as soon as you ask, that's considered a stigma. And a seller, a seller does have to honestly answer that question, but they don't have to volunteer. If it was 
common knowledge that in this cultural group of people that 100% affected the value. They would never purchase a house and they were predominantly the purchasers of houses in this area. Are you talking about a dead body still? Yeah. So, or violent crime or someone dying or whatever. So um, all of those examples you've used have yeah. legally been stated like the, those They're have not, been taken. Those are not material latent defects. Those are stigmas. You can make a presumption that it's going to affect some individual, mm-hmm. but that's a presumption. It's not a fact. Yeah. Okay. And, and and as a buyer's agent, it is your job to try – like if you if you would assume, it is your job to find out whether or not mm-hmm. your client cares about that as part yeah. of your agency duty. But the seller doesn't have to think about that until they're asked. So I, I guess the question, and I don't know the answer, I would think that it would be a stigma now where where you have to ask. I disagree. Because the bank still cares. Exactly. Yeah. Good, I, I good think, point. I think yeah. unequivocally it affects the value of the home in 100% of cases. Yeah. Therefore, it's a material latent defect. Now, if, if they had done your example and grown marijuana outside, would you consider that would be a stigma? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Until it's proven unequivocally that it de- that it devalues the property right yeah but if it was if the plants were grown after the date of legalization <laughs> <laughs> because that's important because if it was before that it, it becomes a source of criminal activity right right mm, there's, yeah there's, yeah good point there's a, there's a difference there uh, so the the answer to the question is, is yes. You know, yeah, yeah, you have every right to ask. So the baseline for anybody who's a buyer is if there's something important to you, make sure your agent knows. Yeah. So then those questions are asked. And if the question is asked, it has to be answered honestly. And if it's really important to you, make sure you get answers to those questions in writing. Yes. Because you have to have a paper trail if it proves that you were given misinformation. Okay. Well, Allison, I hope you found that helpful. Let's uh, tell t- let's tell a story. It's story time with Jer. Great story, compelling and rich. It's not always my story. No, it's not always your story. What if Matt has an awesome story to tell? Well, he can tell it to me or write it down, and I will <laughs> paraphrase. This is Multiple Offers, a real estate show. So I had kind of a fun uh, inspection yesterday. It was out in White Rock in one of these like ultra modern, super cool houses, like these like real boxy West Coast modern. Oh yeah, kinda, oh uh, yeah, I love those totally. Um, but the inspector and and I was I was using Gary Deville, who has done a ton of inspections. I I used him when I got my home inspected, um, and he he used to build houses. Um, but he said something I've never heard before from him, which was at the end of the inspection, he said. Uh, of the over 7,500 homes I've inspected, this one is the best. I've been searching for something to complain about, and a light bulb burned out while I was inspecting it. That's all I've got. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this guy's not in your pocket. No, no. <laughs> no, Gary's, Gary's a fantastic home inspector. He, uh, he, he, he found a wiring on a house in Vancouver one time that uh, – was only used for two months before they declared it. Uh, this wiring is totally faulty. It should never be in houses. Don't ever use it. Holy and crap. Like, yeah, oh, he's on top of his stuff. Um, what kind of wiring is it? Oh, I don't know. I, I have no idea. They Some only used it for two months. Random. I've never just, he said the name. I don't remember what it was, but huh. uh, um, yeah, so. That's that seems actually unbelievable because I mean inspectors always prove their their value by saying yeah. oh, I found a little thing here and a little thing there and the other thing that seems almost unfathomable fathomable in that situation is how a homeowner can get everything right. Oh, th- this woman is meticulous. Yeah, I mean, you have to brand be. new yeah. houses nowadays yeah. aren't even brand new houses are worse even, aren't than even grandma right. and grandpa's <laughs> house. Yeah, how old was this house? Um, I think it's probably two years old. Okay, so yeah. so it has that going for it that a lot of the systems are, are modern. It's not a spec house. It's That's the reason why, is that it was architecturally oh, it, drafted. Everything was just done. Part of the marketing for this out. home is who designed the house. Yeah. Like, it's a very special home. Um, but you almost feel bad when you're getting news that good. Like, I had to say to my client, like, I've never, he doesn't, I've never heard him say that. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, have, I have no issue with that. I mean, yeah. because they're going to point something out if they can find it. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. 
That is amazing. I mean, well built house. They weren't cutting corners, which seems to be every builder locally in town. No offense, I'm sure there's a couple, but the guys that are doing most of the building, a, a lot of the guys who are money mass producing everywhere yeah. they can. Well, and sometimes it's not even their fault. It's just their crew. Like the guy doing the electrical, it's like, well, you got the lead guy, but then you got two other guys, and one one guy just happened to wire one thing backwards. Right. If the plug still works. The homeowner could never be the wiser. It's just reverse polarity. Have, have you guys seen that house that's for sale on Mott right now? Uh, Not Shane Basden's, the other one across the street, uh, John, something or other. Um, nice house. It's really cool. But the bathtub is backwards. The You know how in a bathtub... The drain, like the drain, the drain on is the at wrong. the same end as where the spout is. No, it's in. It's, it's at the opposite it's end. It's at the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> and like, it's a nice house, but my buyer looked at it and was like, "Well, if I put my, oh, I got to put my head where the faucet is. This is kind of weird. Like just just looking at, like just the way that. And I'm sure it's exactly what you said. The guy who put in the bathtub in the 40s just put it in backwards, and and away it went. Hmm. It's faucets on the wall and they they ordered is it a one-sided skirted tub yeah it's just totally they probably the, just ordered the wrong one then and it didn't it was like it's here well yeah, that's really yeah. hard to move the drain though maybe the drain was put because the tub is there and they're like gotta i'm plumbing <laughs> this for this this tub that's here yeah that's a weird one and that's amazing though, i want to go i want to go check this house out now <laughs> you, you want to see the backwards Mystery tub? i want to see bathroom. the perfect house <laughs> yeah the <laughs> Perfect house. <laughs> go check that one out. And, and yeah. huge, MLS huge number credit to the homeowner. Oh yeah, um, for Mott. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. No, I'm I'm very very impressed. So anyway, that's just my story for the week. It, it's something I f- figure won't happen again in my career. So it was pretty cool. The perfect house. The perfect house. It does exist. I've been telling people <laughs> <laughs> this whole time yeah, for all it, years. Times we've said you're never going to find There's a ten no out of ten. <laughs> Turns out we were wrong. <laughs> Jeff it's found in, one. It's in way wrong. <laughs> yeah. All righty. So uh, next week we're going to have Stephanie Barrett come on. Yes, Stephanie is going to join the show. She's. I think what she wants to talk about is uh, people using alternate lending uh, than just the banks. That she's been going through a lot of people using using alternative lenders and having a really good amount of success with that. Cool. Well, that's great. And today uh, they announced the Bank of Canada is increasing uh, their rate. So Stephanie can give us a one week update on that and let people know what it means if you're on a variable or just if you're shopping. So that's important to know as well. Steph can give us a general update on what's going on in the market. So I'm looking forward to having her on. I need to hear from her. So uh, that'll be next episode. And uh, Jeff, you're going to close us out here? Yeah. Thank you guys very much for listening. Uh, if you have questions or feedback, you can reach us at feedback at morealestateshow.com. We would love to hear from you. And if you are enjoying this show, please think about leaving us a five-star review on iTunes. That really helps us be found by more and more listeners, which you know we want to catch them all. If you want to get a hold of Matt Brabens or Jeremy Ray, you can get you can reach them at Real Estate New. No, that's my that's website. That's huge, Jeff. Oh, I almost got <laughs> away with it. <laughs> uh, if you want to get a hold of Matt or Jer, you can find them at thenewwestguys.com. Uh, and if you want to get a hold of me, Jeff McLennan, I am at realestatenewwest.com. That's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for listening. So um, I want to talk to you guys about fiber optic cabling. Um, <laughs> we were doing, okay, we were doing that when we were doing the episodes with, uh, I think it was the mayor that brought it up, but they were talking about some, you know, new stuff that they're doing around the city and they were doing the bridge, Matt, bridge, bridge net. Bridge net, I think is their it's, fancy word. That sounds word. like some company or something that I've heard of That's when before. he was talking about how New West is trying to attract the tech jobs. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, do you guys have, is it? Do you know if it's in your neighborhood yet? Are you guys on fiber? I don't know. Yeah, it's weird because like for the longest time, tell us and tell us was calling you, Matt, saying we've got this new fiber, fiber, and you're like, you don't have it. And he's like, oh yeah, we have it. Like, no, you don't. Check your computer, right? Yeah, yeah, and I'd say no to pull my actual address, and they'd be like, oh yeah, sorry, we can't give it to you. Tell us knocked on my <laughs> door the other night, and we're trying to sell me something. Yeah, 
it may have been fiber optic cable. I Maybe it's not. I just know the city's been adding it. They've got they have it down on the key now. Um, I've been trying to because like I, I don't know. You know, anytime that your your like internet lags or some crap happens, <laughs> you're just like. For shock, give me the just what just even a, a single moment of stuttering. <laughs> We're so used to instant, right? Yeah. So it's just as soon as I see that spinny wheel of death, I'm just like, well, part of this fiber boys. network is that they're selling the data stream to other providers, like outside of Telus and Shaw. So okay. it seems like a smart business. So right? you can you got other options to pay monthly for your internet service. Okay. Because it's we have a bit. There's a bit of like a monopoly. I guess it's not necessarily not, not technically a monopoly because there's different. Because there's two. There's two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Price fixing. But um, we just pay, we pay so much. So I was just trying to, I was looking out there and and now there's like contracts. So I don't know. Would Are you guys on contract at all for cable? I'm not on internet? The contract, no. It's really cheap. It's like right for, well, for new shop customers, it's like half price for six months. And then I'm already paying 80 for, it was only $15 more to go from the 75 megabit up to 300 hmm. megabits. Um, and I was normally I didn't really care because the seventy five works, but I was just thinking for for videos and uploading stuff. Maybe it's a bit faster for that moment of lag you get once a month. For the moment of lag <laughs> I get once a month. Um, I get little soft spots in my townhouse. There, there are certain places where my Wi Fi is really. But junky. this is more like a like a bandwidth thing. Like you you yeah. upload videos you, like your your stuff, but you're just doing it right from your phone. No, I no you I go to the I, computer. I go to the computer. And some of these files, the larger they are, they get to they're like five. Oh yeah, when when I upload a video, it, I mean, depending on how long it is, it takes hours. Sometimes. Yeah. So yeah. that's what I'm hoping. I'm thinking. I'm justifying it as a work expense because it's home office. It's right. You load the video. This is what you told Jane. Yeah, she, I haven't even told her. Well, she's like, Shaw emailed me. Why does Shaw email me? Like, don't worry about it. You're like, I don't know. <laughs> as long as they don't have to come to my house, I can just use the regular router that we have. As long as it gets. Uh, Yes, Tom. But I'll let you guys know. Re- report back. But I was interested in the fiber, and it's. I don't think it's coming to my, you know, hmm. little uh, modest little townhouse complex. Um, and then our other friend uh, Jay, who was a guest on the show, yeah, at one point in time, he, told he, us about some was, new internet in the sky. Episode eighteen. He filled in for you, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then he wanted oh, your spot. I heard. Uh, but no, he was saying that there's going to be five Gs coming, so we're not even going to need Shaw. So then I was a little bit nervous about signing up for a two year contract when there's going to be this new, you know, satellite five G internet that's going to be way better than the four one more G. Um, five five is bigger than four. Yeah, so it must be. It must be better. <laughs> but then Matt discovered it's only it's for enterprise. It's not actually going to be like for renting a car. Yeah, <laughs> they they pick you up. <laughs> It, no, it sounds like they still want to do a separate home internet service, but 5G over the air is to be able to manage like autonomous cars and all this other stuff that requires... Oh, it legitimately ton, is for enterprise. A, a ton of data, yeah. And and to huh. make industry... It's, it, what do they call it? The next wave of industrial revolution, right? 5G mm. over the air is going to and let... And Uniserve is actually yeah. one of the, the main people pioneering this technology. Not true. Oh, Jer's, Jer's making a joke because no, no, I, but, I no, have but a Uniserve email. Uniserve <laughs> is on the list for yeah. the BridgeNet. Like yeah. they're they're a host. they're one of the main people. Yeah. Yeah, they're a host. No, but you made it sound like they're five G technology. They're no, on no, the BridgeNet technology. Know. That's way 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 beyond <laughs> Uniserve. We, we so. said enterprise, data, and bold all within thirty seconds. This is a lot of Star Trek, and I, and uh, I just don't know if I'm going to be a Shaw Klingon for the rest of my life, <laughs> <laughs> or if if I if you're going to get, get Borg. More? Hey. <laughs> um, anyways, this is going downhill quick. Uh, Princess Leia? 